Afro-Latino world. Uh, this is Candace coming at you with another uh, book interview. Uh, this time around, uh, we're talking with a children's author, uh, very special for us, a very special opportunity for us. Um, and you'll see uh, very soon the reason why um, we were so excited to have a chance to speak with this author. Her name is Ikiwa Aire. Um, and uh, yes, <laughs> And uh, she has written a wonderful book um, that focuses on uh, a very powerful leader. Yes, Njinga of Indongo um, focuses on mm -hmm. a, very, a historic um, leader uh, from Africa. So uh, before we get into the book, um, Ikiwa, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, everybody. I am so honored to be meeting with all of you. My name is Akiwa Aire. I was born and raised in Benin City in Nigeria. I currently live in Canada. And when I became a mom, I realized that um, a lot of the knowledge that I have on African history and culture, I didn't know how to pass that on to my kids. Uh, because there weren't any books out there that um, talked specifically on these topics. And so I decided to take a stab at writing books for kids about African history and culture, because we come from um, wonderful people who did great things, whose um, accomplishments are not being highlighted in mainstream media. And I'm hoping that with my books, I can share um, Africa's wonderful history with all of you and your kids. Well, uh, thank you very much. Um, and truly, I can see from reading this book um, that you are executing your goal, um, that uh, this is a really important book, I think, for the next generation to, to have and, and to know about. Um, so one of the first questions that I like to ask our authors, um, given that um, this is Afro-Latino world, uh, a lot of emphasis on our African heritage. I'd like to know from you, um, what are your, who are your ancestors in literature or who are the people who have inspired you to do what you do um, today as an author? I was inspired by Chimamanda because who is not inspired by Chimamanda? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's an absolutely um, talented uh, writer. Mm -hmm. But outside of writing, I love how dedicated she is to her culture and being herself no matter what. But she doesn't conform to what um, the mainstream media wants her to be. She's proud of who she is, she's proud of where she's from. She just happens to write for um, a group of the A group that uh, my kids could not plan. So what I'm trying to do with my books is share with kids um, African history and culture in a way, in the same way that she shares our um, culture with her books as well. So she's my big inspiration. Okay, that's, that's great to hear. Um, and so I noticed that with this book, um, it seems to be a part of a series um, that is offered under a website or a company called ancestries.com. Uh, and so uh, Njinga is not the only um, powerful woman uh, that we have a story for. There's, there's another one there as well. And so I, I wanted to know, how did you come to create um, Ancestries.com? Or how, how, yeah, how was Ancestries.com? Yes. So the website is OurAncestries.com. Mm -hmm. And I created that because I'm telling the stories of our ancestors. And I didn't just want to stop with telling the stories. I wanted kids uh, to be engaged with these um, characters. And so um, I have another book, like you mentioned. My first book was, was um, Idia of the Benin Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And this followed the story of Queen Idia, who lived in um, 500 years ago in the Kingdom of Benin. And that was my first book because um, she is my ancestor. I am from Benin. Mm -hmm. I'm a Benin um, descent uh, girl or woman, and her story is fascinating. Her, um, she is her her mask, the mask that her son had made of her after she passed away. The Idia Ivory mask is very popular in pop culture, 
And I thought that her mask was more popular than her story was. And I was trying to sort of even the playing field so that when people see that mask, which you see almost everywhere, maybe I can pull up um, a page to show the mask. You may have seen this mask in, um, in your runnings. Pardon? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm just yes. re reacting. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yeah, so I wanted people to, when they see that mask, know who that mask is about. I didn't think that was too much to ask. Mm -hmm. And so that was why I wrote the book. Now, book two in Queen Ejinga, um, once I wrote book one, I was looking at, looking to write another book. And, and I didn't know about Queen Ejinga before I started looking for another legend to write about. And when I read her story, I was immediately captivated. I was like, wow, she is so cool. Everybody needs to know this story. And I decided to write her story as well. Um, because I don't just want the books to just be just a book that you just read. And there's so much to our history and culture. Like it's it's so deep and there's, it's really not been analyzed enough. Mm -hmm. With each book, I also have activity books that go with them. And these activity books, you can um, have coloring pages, lesson plans, t-shirts. So that was why, to answer your question, our ancestries was created because it's not just the books. The books are what I'm hoping would fuel a movement that would encourage um, kids and people all over the world to become excited about African history and culture. Yes, I could definitely see that this work is not only for mothers and aunties and cousins and sisters it's for educators i can see how this could be of interest to educators as well and to really um get the information out there or get the knowledge out there about these uh these leaders these very powerful women leaders um so um i'd like to know um from you what is it um that you would like for our children to know about Queen Njinga? Well, there's a, there are a lot of theories about Queen Njinga. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, like we really only have knowledge of what was written mm -hmm. and we know who did the writing and whose writings are um, kept till today. Mm -hmm. If our children were to remember anything about Queen Njinga, I would like them to remember her as a very smart girl who became an extremely competent leader mm -hmm. who was really focused on keeping her people free. At the time Injiga became a ruler, um, the kingdom of Ndogo was being, was trying, to, was under like a lot of pressure from the Portuguese who were trying to take over and who were doing um, not so nice things to the people. And she dedicated her life to fighting for the freedom of her people. And she did a lot of out of, she, 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 um, she took on a lot of out of the box ideas to get what she wanted done done. She um, allied with the Dutch. She actually married to get herself in a better position to be able to um, defend her, her um, people. Mm -hmm. She actually became a Christian strategically to get what she wanted done. So she was extremely smart. And it was only after she passed away that the Portuguese got what they wanted and they started to colonize um, what, is, what we now know as Angola. So I would, like, I would like her to be remembered as someone who was smart, who did, who did new things that had never been done before. She, she, she accomplished many firsts in her time, and I think she should be remembered by everybody. Yeah, definitely. She seems like someone who very unlikely um, was able to beat back the colonizers for, for as long as she could, right? Which was not, yeah. which unfortunately was not something that um, other leaders of other nations could do at that time. So I, and to yeah. think that it was uh, a woman leader that was able to do that and to use all of her, um, all of the knowledge that she knew and just all of her instincts that she knew to be able to do that, I think is especially remarkable. A lot of her ruling, she was even able to accomplish in exile. 
So even though she wasn't in the kingdom of Nobu at the time, she took over another kingdom of Matamba, and she continued to rule the kingdom of Nobu and Matamba in exile. This showed how powerful she was and how loved she was by her people. Yes, how loved she was by her people. It, it seems as though this was a woman who ruled not through fear so much, but through um, yeah. admiration, uh, respect uh, from uh, the, the people around her, right? Um, so I'm really hoping that uh, the people in our community can um, get to know this book. If you could um, hold, hold up the cover one more time, because I, <laughs> I looked at a yeah. digital copy. Um, <laughs> Yes, this uh, beautifully illustrated and just very illuminating book. Um, I really encourage everyone to um, to go out and find it uh, <laughs> where, wherever they can and get it however they can. And I'd also like to ask a final question for you. Um, are there any other uh, books that you have, you know, in the works for us? Yes. I'm working on two more books. Um, these will be on male characters because I'm trying to even things out. Mm -hmm. And for these books, I am thinking about going to the Kingdom of Mali to write about the leader there because mm -hmm. the Mali Empire is fascinating. Mm -hmm. They are one of the first writers of the world. They have a history of education, of a focus on education and writing and literary excellence. And um, in spite of the fact that Africa, African history is sort of looked on as um, you guys kind of didn't have anything going on until we came and colonized you. I think telling the story of the African Empire, of the Mali Empire, we show that uh, we actually did have quite a lot going on in Africa mm -hmm. before. Uh, colonization interrupted our history and yes. I'll be going to the much loved and much written about his Egypt as well um, in my next mm -hmm. two books so I'll be going to Egypt and to Mali. Okay wonderful wonderful so uh, very much looking forward to those coming through um, and for anyone who wants to visit the website it's ourancestories.com. Uh, yeah. uh, so yes. Our Ancestor. <laughs> right? Uh, just so you know how to Our dash ancestries.com. Yes, I should Our have a, a placeholder somewhere. There we go. Yes. Uh, so thank you very much, Ikiwa, for uh, sharing this uh, book with us and for your time today. Um, and uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing more of your work in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you for meeting with me. It was a pleasure meeting you.